Good evening to everyone. And in behalf of the Bahrain Meditation Center, I happily welcome you to our third episode for the introduction or the basic course for meditation. So we are so glad that you find time and the energy to join us in this uh, endeavor. So um, let's try to have a recap of what we have taken up last time, last Monday, about introduction to who am I? It's like refreshing and getting connected to the truth of who am I? So I hope you did some kind of experimentation of really putting that awareness as frequent and uh, as probably as conscious as I can to remind that I am, for example, a peaceful soul. And I hope you did that experiment and see the difference of how our action and interaction resulted to. So if there is some kind of a sharing or a question at this point about last time's discussion, then you're much welcome to pose your questions before we proceed to our very enlightening discussion tonight. And maybe towards the end, it will be good that you open your, open your camera and it's good to see physically still, although every one of us are souls, it's good to see each one. So if you have some questions at this point about our, yeah, so good evening about our discussion last time. So none. So let's see how it will go. So for tonight, what we're going to discuss now would be how am I going to come up with that transformation of that awareness or that consciousness? So I will be able to be the master of myself, to be the Raj, because more often than not, we are most of the time driven by what we see, by what we hear, by what we touch, most of our external senses. And also another factor is most of the time what happens in the mind. We often catch ourselves perhaps, I don't want to have this thinking. I don't want to have this thought. What will I do to be able to get rid of this thought? What happens, the more that we think about it, what do you notice? Once you say, I don't want to get rid of this thought. I don't want to get rid. I don't want to get angry. I don't want to get angry. What happens, the more that anger or that thing that we don't want persist, it keeps coming and coming and coming. So to be able now to go into what we truly want, it is good to understand what you call the anatomy of the consciousness, anatomy of the consciousness. Nowadays, we are so thankful about science because they have done a lot of research to understand the anatomy of the body. So that's why the death rates had been decreased remarkably as compared in the previous years because of the study in terms of the anatomy of the physical dimension understanding each cell of the body and that matters so that we'll able now to uh, do the right thing of what we're supposed to do to take care of the body. But what about the anatomy of the soul? What about the anatomy of the consciousness? How we put a certain amount of time equally to be able to understand what is really going on inside the things that we don't see. We have put a lot of attention in things on the external, on things of the physical, but what happens with the things that is internal? So nowadays, the consciousness about this is growing faster exponentially of really how to deal with difficult situation. It's like telling us that we have to turn our attention, our energy inward. 
we have moved outward so much. We go, we go into the depth of the ocean. So nowadays, we even have tourists going to the outer spaces and then going to the moon, now to the Mars. So see the exploration that we have. So, so much this human brain, this human, you, you know, this mind can really do to be able now to go into a lot of exploration. But now I think is the time with a lot of things happening. It's now telling us the compass is now directing us into we have to do more of understanding of what is happening inside. It is deep, but that's the only way by which we can get to survive the humankind, the human, the generations would have to survive further. So that is what we are going to discuss so that we can go into that kind of transformation. So I would share with you the slides that I will use for the for our discussion. So we have here, yeah, so this is what we are going to discuss, the anatomy of the consciousness. So to understand the interrelationship of what is happening into the consciousness. And at this point, when I say consciousness, it relates to the soul, it relates to the awareness, it relates to the energy, it relates to the being. So let me, let me recall with you what I have been stressing about what meditation is. So it's not just sitting down, but it's being able to reach a certain state of being, the highest state of being that we can of course, at this time, the highest that we can reach will be at a certain level. But if we practice on and on, we can see that it becomes higher until we reach the point where it is at the top. It's like steps that we go. First step, there is already experience that we get in terms of the awareness, in terms of the feelings. And later, in terms of how we are interrelating with others. So we learn to concentrate and focus on what kind of thoughts pure. So the thoughts can lead us to that higher feeling that should emerge. And this will eventually awaken our highest potential character. So it's not just about sitting down, but as we go out there and we are doing our action and interaction, what happens is it will heighten. It will be recorded. Vibrational energy will be changed into more and more positive. So let me just have, um, let's say, same level of understanding about, again, the consciousness, the being, to understand this. When we say consciousness, it refers to the awareness or sensation, sensation, of internal or external existence. So what we discussed last time was to realize and to see that most of the time, even in a day, our awareness and sensation are more of the external existence. Try to see the activities that we are doing on 24 hour basis. So you sleep, what will that go? It would be in terms of my human existence, external. And then we think about our job. We think about the food that we eat and so on and so forth. Okay, driving the car, going to work, sitting down in the work for how many hours? And then again, we go for a break, we go for lunch, we go for tea and so on. So most of these things are on the external existence, if not all the time. The energy is spent into this. That's the reason why our consciousness relates more, our identity relates more in terms of the human, the body consciousness. And again, to, to recall, the result when our awareness is in terms of our external existence, then the result would be 
insecurity, and then it will create more and more desires. And this is where a lot of things would come. There would be ego, there would be attachment. I hope you remember what we had last time. There would be attachment and you would want more. There would be greed. There would be, there, uh, there would be lost total dependency on these things. So we will be into that cycle, roller coaster. Yes, there is pleasure. But again, because our foundation is in a very fluid ground, it's a very fluid thing where we are getting a support of it can come and it can go. So we can go into that cycle. So as you can see then, what, where do we go? It's now focusing into the internal sensation, into that internal awareness. First awareness is who am I? I, the being. So that is what we are going to do. To, okay. So, yeah, so this is okay. The human being, the human, which is the external, as I've said, and then the being. Now, we have done enough study, physiology of the human, as I said earlier. The being is simple. You only have three like organs, like three uh, faculties in the being. And these main faculties are the mind, the intellect, and we call the subconscious mind or the impressions and tendencies. So who is the being or who is thinking that goes for the mind? It is the being. Who is deciding that is the intellect? It is the being. It is that internal sensation. And then everything that we do and act would always be impressed in my subconscious. It will always be recorded in my subconscious. And to a certain extent, the consciousness, that awareness that comes out from within to be expressed into the external world will depend on the interplay of these three main faculties, the mind, the intellect, and the tendencies. So let's see the diagram here, how it goes, putting the three together. So if we are going to dissect, we have these three faculties again. We have the conscious mind. Sorry, it's a little bit blurred, yeah, but it's still readable. The conscious mind, you have the subconscious mind where we have the impressions and we have the intellect. So I, there is the consciousness. I, the being, I, the spirit. So as you can see in the arrow, it is an interplay of these three main faculties that will determine that expression that will have to put out through my body. And once that thought or that decision that had been taken to be expressed in my body through my sense organs, I have come up with that experience, then it will be recorded in my subconscious. Somehow the subconscious, it is in the sub. It's not really on that external. But to a certain extent, as you can see the arrow, this will definitely have a great impact into the conscious, into the conscious mind, into what is happening. So if I would want to come up with a transformation, where do I go in terms of uh, working out? I suppose we start with the intellect because the intellect is the faculty that understands so the words that are in there they it's it will judge it's going to do rationalization and the most important function of the intellect is decision it is the filter within me so the way we understand things will determine the way we perceive things and to a certain extent, that's how we are going to do our decision. So if we are not understanding and we don't have that knowledge, then nothing. It will be on that, on a certain level. We are not able to come up with the right understanding. We don't know. So for example, just a simple example. If 
we have not seen elephant. And really, I don't have any, for example, huh? we, we have seen pictures. But say, for example, a baby, you know, first time to hear the elephant, although the children now are so much exposed with the media and they know all of these things, no? But you know, I would just say a word, elephant, or I would just say abracadabra, where that does not mean anything. Because I did not see, I don't understand what it really means, or elephant. But if at a certain point you get to see an elephant, you get, I will explain to you what is the meaning of that abracadabra, then it makes a difference already. So the same thing. I go back to the more important aspect here that yes, the, the last Monday, we came up with understanding really of who am I. I am not this body. I, the being of light, that point of light in this body, and I, the being of light, is the same in that aspect with the others. That is the reason why this main, just this one word, I, the being of light, will make a difference of how we are going to act and interact with the others. Because as I see myself in that being of light, I look at others as also a being of light. And very important that creates equality with the other human that we are going to interact with. And this is one aspect that, that is a consequence of the shift of consciousness from identification with the body and identification with the being, that inner, that inner life force that we have. So today, why we have a lot of conflict? Because we tend to look at each other in terms of the false identity. I look at them, if I am looking at myself in terms of my possessions, either I am the richest or I am the poorest, or I am poorer than you, or I am richer than you. So if I am richer than you, then there would be something else that come in between. So my understanding, I go back to that intellect. So the way I look at others, that is now my filter, will be based on this identity. I am richer than this person. I have a better attitude than this person. So that creates now, or I don't know, or this person is higher than me. So either way, that is, I put myself lower, I put somebody else higher. So that creates now the discrepancy and somehow relationship and the way we do things will somehow be affected. But if we are going to look at what will put us on an equal level, I don't have, if I am in this level that I, the being of light, and I look at you also as that being of light, in that equality, I am not higher, I am not lower. Automatically that security will come, the respect will come, respect of myself and respect of others. Otherwise, on the external, I am richer. Somebody is richer. Then I will have to come up with a book. I will be richer than anyone. But you, the point of life, whatever wealth that you have, these are just instruments. Remember, what is the purpose? Why we are here? To be able to express what is inside me. What is the truth about me? And we all have the same. We are all abundant. So if I operate on that spirit of abundance, of not taking, I think you will have the best relationship with the self and with others. So that is now how the intellect should go on that level of understanding. Otherwise, if I'm not coming up with that understanding what will happen, Whatever is recorded in my subconscious, whatever experience that I have, whatever emotions that I have, past experiences, impressions, will influence the way they become my filter to be able now to relate at things on different levels. So it will surface in my conscious mind, and that is, it will come up with more thoughts, more opinions, more uh, feelings and emotions. 
And that's the way I am going to see the world. So my filter is dependent now on what happened in the past. What is my feeling, previous feeling, and so on. And somehow it's going to go out in terms of my expression, in terms of my relationship, in terms of my work. And because I am operating on that falsehood, yes, there will be, again, happiness that we get. But somehow, something or another will come. So again, it will heighten, go back to my subconscious, and it will go into that tendency where if it is like attachment or anger and so on, it will heighten that particular tendency. As I've said earlier, Whatever we practice, we will be good at that. So based on our understanding that I am the best, the person have done something different from what I think is the best. So what happens if that's something wrong, I will be irritated. Another one does something which is not according to what, in my opinion. So again, I will not be pleased. I will be irritated. So it will go okay into that uh, into that recording so what am i practicing i am irritated i am irritated i am peaceless so that is what i will be good at. so if you can see that our character personality is somehow what is manifested is dependent on the attitude in terms of our habit in terms and that defines now our personality it all depends, it, starting with the understanding and the intellect. So how do we go further into this? So to summarize what I've said earlier, thoughts, the thoughts will create the feelings. So vibration. So when you have vibration, it will enable us to move, to do a certain behavior. So feelings create a certain behavior. And that behavior, as I've said, will reinforce thoughts, will reinforce a certain tendency or form that kind of program, that kind of filter that I have in my subconscious already. So it will reinforce that. It will surface again into my conscious mind. More thoughts will be created along that line. So we will be either in the cycle of positivity or in the cycle of negativity. So where do we start? We start with the thought. So starting today, I challenge, you can have 21 days challenge or how many days challenge to be able to be mindful of the thought that I put in my mind. Our inner world is determined by the thoughts that we keep in our mind. So if the thought, it's, if the thought is like a seed, whatever thought that we put plant into our mind, it's going to grow. We put attention to that. So naturally that is what it will come out and it will bear fruit. So if I plant a good seed, a good thought, and I not I nurture that, I take care of that in that way, what happens? Naturally, there would be good fruit. So take note of how the mind is powerful. And we have to be very mindful about what to put in there. It's a thought that I want. What do you want? Most of the time, the thought that we plant in there, we keep on thinking, we think of things that we don't want. As I've said earlier, I don't want to get angry. I don't want to get angry. I don't want to get angry. So what happens? You follow with me with this. So I say, I don't want to get angry. I don't want to get angry. I don't want to get angry. What do you notice about the image that is, or the feeling that is that comes along with that. I don't want to get angry. 
what would be the image that will come? Images of that moments that you were that you were angry. So you feel or you will feel that anger more. Not I don't want to be angry. Because what happens, the mind, unlike the the mind does not do, does not um, does cannot determine which is a bad thought or a good thought. It is the function of the intellect. So the mind, where we put the thought, is like as a, is like let's say just a stage, or it's just like a soil where we plant the seed. So if you plant the seed on the ground, the ground will not tell you no, this is a good or a bad seed. It will be the farmer, it will be the gardener who will determine whether the seed is good or bad. So as we plant this, it is the gardener who already determines what kind of seed to be planted on the soil. Very fertile soil. Our mind is like that. It is very, very fertile. It is just a matter of time when you plant a certain seed and it can grow into other things already. A slight feeling and then a very strong feeling. And then later on, it will be put into action. I go back to that example that I was giving. So I said, I would say, I don't want to, I don't want to get angry. I don't want to get angry. You will notice that the feeling goes more now into what? Feeling of that anger. So what do we do then? You don't want to get angry. What do you want? See the difference? Because see, the mind will catch only that anger because that is something that it is familiar with. The dog is very general. It's just like you go to the restaurant and then you tell the waiter and you say, I don't want, uh, I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this. What will the waiter tell you? The waiter will tell you, then what do you want? You just tell me what you want and that's it. So the mind will not wait too long, though it is a very loyal servant. It will just do what you are going now to command the mind, but it's not going to wait for long to tell or to command what you want. So rather than saying, I don't want to get angry, what should be the thought? What do you want? Yeah, you can come up with that. You decide. I should decide what I want. What experience should I want? So, I don't want to get angry. I want to be peaceful. See the difference of the feeling when you say, I don't want to get angry. And then, I want to be peaceful. Because the mind will still process. Then what do you want? You want this? You want that? And then it so happened that you are familiar that you have been doing this over and over. The mind doesn't know that that is bad. Oh, got irritated. Okay, so maybe this is the one. Then it will show. Another example is, for example, you would say, I don't want uh, chocolate because you are controlling your sugar or you are now more health conscious. So I say, I don't want chocolate. I don't want chocolate. So the thought is chocolate. Chocolate. Huh? So it is planted in there. What is the image that comes? The moment that you say, I don't want chocolate, I don't want chocolate, the more the image of the chocolate is being clear in the mind. It's creating that strong desire of chocolate. So the moment that you go out there and take something, the first thing that you see is chocolate. Oh, I don't want chocolate, but this is what I see. Why? That is the energy that is being created there. The mind is not figuring out you don't want chocolate, but the chocolate is the predominant, it's the dominant image that comes, so it will catch that one. So rather than saying, I don't want chocolate, then what do you want? Because it cannot process so much the don't. It will have trial and error in processing the don't. So instead of, I don't want chocolate, what do you want? If really you want to, you want to lose weight, 
and you want to go into healthier food, then what do you want? Maybe you would say, I want fruit. But again, fruit is already okay, better, but fruit is again a general, a general thing. What if you catch on a very sweet fruit also and you want to control your sugar? So still, this is not a specific thought that I planted in my mind. It's still general. So rather than saying, I want fruit, be specific. For example, of a specific thought of that is, I want apple. See, the transition from I don't want chocolate, I want fruit, and I want apple. Apple is very specific. But apple, when you say apple, does not create the kind of strong feeling of wanting to eat an apple. So what do you do is to put character again into that particular, particular thought that you have. Put more into it so that it will create the feeling. For example, I want a green, juicy, fresh apple. So were you able to feel that sensation with that thought? Putting more into it? Don't make it dry. Don't make it bland. So say, I want a green, juicy, fresh apple. Oh, did you feel that sensation of the juicy, juiciness? Where is the apple? It's not in front of me, but it is in my mind. So it's all about the game of the mind. So if you know how to use the technology of the mind, you will be at the advantage most of the time. You will be bigger. I will be bigger than any of the situation because you will all have the things, all these thoughts, it's all according to the choice in order to respond to the situations that come. So thought watch means to be aware whether the seed that I have planted will be a seed that will bear the fruit that I want. So if you want uh, a mango to get later on, then I should plant a mango seed. So it's going to give me a mango fruit. So thought watch. The type of thoughts. So to start with, this is now the function of the intellect understanding that the thoughts create the feeling and the feeling will create the behavior. Behavior again will go into the thoughts. So type of thoughts. Let's start with ordinary. Ordinary thoughts are thoughts that relate to the habitual things that we do. And it does not create a kind of negative impact or a positive impact. So like you wake up and you wanted to take tea or I want to take tea, that's it. It's just like zero, not positive, not negative. But most of the time, ordinary does not stand to be ordinary because we put something more into that thought by putting color into this. I would want a, um, the illustration that I want is it's a number line. It's a line in the middle is the ordinary thought, which is zero. And we move on to the left side. So if I go further step thinking more than the thought that is there, then it becomes waste thoughts. So I will start with the waste thought. Huh? So waste thought. Why waste? Because I am coming up with more thoughts add to a certain thought that is not necessary. For example, of the waste thoughts, thinking about the past. So this will not come as one thought. It will come as a bundle of thoughts Blaming, it will be because of this, because of that. Why like this? Why like that? And again, if it so happened that my past is a frustrating past, it is a sorrowful past. I am opening the emotion and the feeling that goes on along with that, that I have thought. Because it creates. So it's just like a wound. It happened maybe five years ago. And we are relating that over and over or thinking about that over and over. It's just like you put a plaster on the wound and it is healing already. But we open it up again 
And the moment that we think and even speak about it, it's like tracing back the wound that we have covered with that with that aid or with that uh, plaster to be able to make it heal. So we go through that feeling and that feeling goes deeper and deeper and deeper that will affect all others. And it's going to go into other links. It's just like when you open the computer, you are just searching for this. And later on, there is a link. And later on, there is a link. And then later on, another link, another link. And then you find out that you are far off from that main thought that you have started with. Interesting. So try to see how it is. You start with that thought, or even in conversation, you talk about this topic with somebody. Later on, you come up with other things. See, after 30 minutes or 15 minutes that you converse with that person, we'll find out that most of the time, if not all the time, the topic that we have is quite far from the topic or the thought that we have started with. That's how the mind will be. It is so rich. It is so fast, especially with the waste thoughts. They're just like, it's like a tsunami that can just come one after the other. So the intellect, my understanding is the filter to put a full stop. If it is waste, waste is waste. Yeah, I will take the question later, okay? So waste is waste. Then what are the other things that come as waste thoughts? Thinking too much of the future. Um, future, it's good to have a plan, but if we are so fixated with that thought that it has to be this, then that comes out to be waste. It's always good to have a plan so you will know, but I should have the ability not to be fixated into that. And about the past also, it's different when you learn from the past. Yeah. Okay, so there is a question over here. And this happens uh, for many of us. What about if we have past experiences that have happened and we are not even aware that it happened like that? but we know that it is affecting our relationship. Definitely, we have cases like this, and we have had, we have the kind of feeling that I have this, but I don't know, I cannot explain how, how it is. We will touch that when we go to further meditation, when we go to our session on Sunday, how we can deal with that, how we can deal with that kind of situation. So at the moment, we just, to dwell into this. The first step to go into the transformation is use the mind in a way that you plant positive or higher level of thinking. So waste is the past, waste is thinking of the thinking of the past, thinking of the future, thinking about others. It weakens us. Thinking about the others. Why is this person like this? Why is that person like that? So I am using my energy on that external. And before we know it, okay, our, we are drained because of think, having waste. And not only that, if we focus further and further into the waste, what happens? It will create deeper and deeper feelings or emotions, and these are negative. So negative, negative thoughts will go into thoughts that can create, you know, harm to myself and to others. And further, if we go into that and we live into this world of negative thoughts, my world is full of the negativity, what happens? It can, we can come up with devilish thoughts. And these are the things that happen with people who can just go take a gun and spray bullets at others. If you try to study and see what happened to them, they are so fixated with so much of negativity, the thoughts. No more. The intellect is not functioning in terms of filtering already. What should be the thoughts that should be planted to my mind that will bring benefit to me and to others? They have been so fixated into this type of thoughts. We don't want this. We don't want to start with waste is waste. And this is where we have to pay attention. Maybe not many will go into negative, into devilish, 
but a lot of our thoughts will go into waste. A lot of thoughts come. Now, what, what will be the transition shift? So from waste, ordinary, go into positive. Positive does not mean that you don't see a certain problem. Positive is not denying that there is a problem, that there is, let's say, a negative behavior that I have. No, actually, it enables us to accept and just leave, don't put anything more into blaming, but go further into what is the solution. So positive thoughts is being aware of what the situation is, but I should not be putting more and more and more thoughts that will lead now or bring me into waste or negativity. Rather, use the time and energy into what is the solution. My weakness, for example, is mathematics for a certain student. I am weak at math. Now, don't put the blame of, oh, I'm weak at math, this is what happens, no, okay? I am a math teacher, so I am very familiar with this uh, conversation with parents. They would come to me and say, oh, my child is weak in math because I am weak in math and, okay, this is my husband or we are weak in math. So it's like coming up with that. So rather than going into that, okay, my son is weak in math, I am weak in math, then what do I do? So come up with a solution. It means I put more attention. It means I have to get a tutor. It means I come up with further and further study for this one. I am weak in math, but this one also, but I am good at something else. I am good in English. I am good in you know, practical things. So I put my energy into this. And later on, if I put my energy into something that is good doable, then it is going to affect all other uh, behavior that I would have. So that is positivity. But still, positive thoughts can always go into waste. So it's like a pendulum that can swing because this is still on an external, uh, uh, it's still coming from the external. We go on further from positive, going into pure. It's not here, but that should be the level. Pure thoughts. Pure thoughts are thoughts that are more constant. They are more stable because they come from the inner being. So these are the thoughts that relate to what I started last time. Who am I? So if I'm faced with a situation where my, let's say, my anger is being challenged, then pause for a while. Remember that uh, quotation that I put, that in be between the stimulus, between the situation, the stimulus and the response, there is always a space that we can capitalize on to be able to allow the intellect to see what I should be able to make the right choice. So pause for a while and say, but I am a peaceful soul. Will what I say manifest me being peaceful? So this talk that I have to myself, one, two sentences will make a difference. And go further from being pure and you become stable into that. Then you go into what you call the opposite of devilish thinking into a divine thinking. Divine thinking means we recognize the ability to be able now to manifest the truth that we have inside, the divine in you. So that's why we have a very beautiful gesture of putting our hands like this and we bow. Means namaste, the word, no? Namaste, which means I recognize my divinity and then we bow like this. I also recognize your divinity. I would say I am a pure soul. I recognize the purity in the others. So this will be how I'm going to, the, the intellect understands. And then based on this understanding, then I can come up, check what are the thoughts that I am planting. You can pause on the day 
and then check what are the thoughts that I have planted. You can pause in the morning, uh, somewhere, maybe after one hour and so on, and just come up with monitoring the thoughts that you have, or that we have planted. So check and then change. If we are going into ways that is, I'm talking about others and so on, then shift now into something that is positive and then shift into something that is pure. Then practice into that, then we can go into the higher level, which we want. Okay, I've given some examples here. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at some examples here where we go into that negative thinking. So you can start with the thought, he is angry with me. And then these are just examples. Maybe you can relate to this. And then another thought will come, he is seeing someone else. Then the thought will come, he wants to leave me. Something terrible has happened to him. He never calls me when he says he will. He doesn't love me. I'm not good enough for him. No one likes me. I am going to be lonely or I am lonely because no one likes me. See how it will go? into no one likes me, then that's it, I'm lonely. Then it will manifest in a behavior. You will cry, go to bed in despair. They will throw things, slams the door, restlessness, then call somebody, that person desperately, okay? And you can blurt out words that we may regret later on. Then, sorry, thoughts and then feelings. There is sad, depression, fearful, and then the behavior. It can either go in which way. So it will go into that. So if my understanding is on that level that others are responsible for the feeling that I have, the situation are responsible, I will go into the cycle of negative thinking. What happens if I want to shift? Here, something came up, he did not call. Something came up and he will call me when he can. He innocently forgets, he forgets, he's a forgetful person or maybe he misplaced for a phone, or maybe the uh, battery ran low and so on, or maybe he has a lot of work to do. It took longer than he expected. See the difference of the thoughts that we frame earlier and then now, there is a big difference. And if we are reading it, you can sense the feeling that comes along with that. So the feeling will be mildly concerned for the welfare. Maybe you will be slightly annoyed there would be no strong disturbing feelings or physical reaction. You're able to shift it back. And likewise, the behavior will be, when you call the person, then it would be a voice that would be more like asking what happened or a concern. You can leave a nice message. You can go on with your regular work. You can go into other things to divert that. See the difference when we are able to manage the thought, the mind, with the intellect, with the understanding, so that it doesn't now bring out all other emotions from that are already in my subconscious. So we can shift into negative thinking into a positive thinking. And this is the exercise that we can always do. Here. So just now to see how the process go, it goes like this. So we have here the circle that we have, you have on the top is the conscious mind and below that is the subconscious mind. And the intellect is the one that is maneuvering what are the thoughts that should be planted on the conscious mind and what should be accepted after that critical factor. What should be rejected, what should be accepted. It is my understanding, it is the intellect. So the conscious mind, it's the intellect that reasons and judges and uses that to be able now to sustain certain thoughts that you would want to sustain there based on the feeling that you want. So it's the intellect analyzing what you be put on the conscious mind. So if according to your understanding, it is not in alignment with who you are as a peaceful being, then I want to shout at that person. You heard something. The person maybe shouted at you. And then you would say, I want also to shout to that person. I will show that I can be more angry than that person. But the intellect functions and says, is that the action? Is that the thought? 
of a peaceful person. So if the intellect is so strong, the willpower is so strong, it will reject, reject the thought. See the arrow, it can bounce off. But if my understanding and my emotion that quickly from my subconscious memories, emotions have come earlier than rejecting that thought, then emotions of negativity can also add up with whatever have happened. So my manifestation, and then I shout, I get angry. And that means I have accepted that and have come up with a program existing in there already that will make it deeper and deeper in terms of it being, uh, let's say, uh, recorded in there. So to see that we have to be careful with the situation that comes that will trigger something because it's not all about the situation, but it is all about a lot of things in my subconscious below the circle where memories, emotions, your beliefs, men especially beliefs that can affect how we are looking, our attitude, how we are looking at the situation, how we are understanding. So to a certain extent, the willpower has to be educated very well. I have to come up with that right understanding. Otherwise, it would be my belief, my memories, my emotions that will take over me. And that will surface in there and it will attract more and more negativity to this situation. So what do we do then to be able now to go into that divine thinking? One, to be aware beyond the waves of your mind shines the light of your divine presence. That faith and that understanding, really that faith, that deep within me is the presence of the divine light. Once upon a time, it was so pure. Like when I was a child, when you were a child, at that time, there was that purity. Where it has not been influenced by all the interaction that we have in the world out there. And that is in relation to the question earlier. That we have subjected, like when we were small, our consciousness is like blank. You don't have a lot. It is very vulnerable to a lot of influence. So the moment that we have more action and interaction, then we come up with more and more beliefs about self and about others. And then we lose a bit and a bit the purity that we have within. See, look at a child, maybe a one or two year old or a one year old where they can already interact with you. Ask them to sing, ask them to dance. They will just move and follow dancing, you know, come up with these steps without thinking that they will make a mistake. They are not going to have the thought. Who is going to have the thought? The adults will have that. And then when they do that action, the adults will laugh and say, oh, you're doing the wrong thing. They suggest that. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. See, they come up with all of these beliefs. They, are, they will just absorb at the time because they don't have the capacity to be able now to, to discern really what is right and what is wrong. So they form that, oh, I make a mistake. They laugh at me when I make a mistake. I get embarrassed. They scold me when I make a mistake. My mother scolds me when I make a mistake. They laugh at me when I make a mistake. So what happens now? So they, next time you ask them to dance, they will not already. Why? They have acquired acquisition already of that thing. I will be judged according to that. So I don't want to dance already. And later on, it will be more of this action and interaction. And the, the intellect is not working so much. 95% is based now on what we have inside to a certain extent. So that's how it will go. But my purity, the essence of my pure essential is never lost. It has just been covered up by a lot of these experiences that we have one layer and another layer and another layer. It's just like, but the light is still inside. Can you imagine if the light is not there? Then we will all be completely so bad. 
we'll all be so completely, you know, in a world of mess. But it's this is the saving grace that we have, that divinity is still in there. It is just one thing to, you know, to explode itself way through all these um, all these layers and layers that we have put up to cover this pure light, this purity that we have within. But still, there is a certain amount that is peeping out from that light that we have within. Take it when it is evening, and we put the shutters down. So if you put the shutters down, we don't see the light that is coming from the room. It is, if you don't see, if you are outside and you're looking at the, the, the room, that building, and it is dark, it is dark not because it doesn't have the light. For all we know, all the lights are open. Why we don't see the light? Because the shutters are down. So we don't see the light. Same thing with us. The, the light is there, but it is not shining so bright. There is just trace of that light, but it is not shining so bright because we put a lot of shutters, different layers to cover that light. The layers of the body consciousness, the ego, the attachment, the memories, and a lot that we put that covers that light, that divinity that we have. So to be able to make this come up with the thinking that brings us into the divine presence, to make that light, the pure light, our inner potential to shine on. So how do we do that? It's starting with the thought. So starting with the thought. So I should make sure that the thought that I put is in alignment with my inner potential. Because in my subconscious, there are two types of recording. I have my acquired recording, which is the negative, but I have my pure, the most positive being that I am. So this is my original nature. My original nature is, as I've told you before, I am a being of peace. I am a being of love. I am a being of truth. So these things, I have to keep on affirming and thinking and come up with thoughts. And that will create my divine thinking. So when I am aligned, my mind come up with the thoughts in terms of my truth. And my thinking and my intellect is now understanding that this is the way it is. Then I am in that highest state. And whatever actions that I do, it will definitely bear fruit of happiness and joy in living. But I have to keep on practicing and I have to be mindful. So this would should be, my purpose is to come up with an experience of love and joy overall. Love is the highest experience. Joy is the highest, sorry, love is the highest feeling and joy, happiness is the highest experience. So, which will be in terms of my original nature. My nature, my purpose is to experience and to give in terms of my original nature. So, you can take a look here. Who am I? I am bodiless. I am loving. I am innocent. You can put further in terms of the qualities that, we, that can come out of the primary qualities of my pure potential. So how does it start? It all starts with coming up with that experience, coming up first with a thought, in alignment with my innate potential. The intellect has to put the two together and practice through meditation. So the way to shift the consciousness on the external consciousness, sensation on the external to sensation in the internal, is through an internal experience, through consciousness, through meditation. So this is our discussion for tonight. And for the weekend, we have how many days break before we meet on, on Sunday again. So let it be that you really try to be aware of the thoughts that come. If you catch yourself with, forget about the negative, but most of the time it would be the waste that come. So shift into something that is positive. 
and see how it goes. Maybe you can share the experience that comes when we meet. So you can type your questions, give your questions in the chat box. So if ever the question that has been given about what about the experiences that we don't know and really, but we know it's manifesting in, in terms of my personality, in terms of my action and interaction, how do we deal with that? So that's why we have some who go into hypnosis as a way to be able to deal with that. But uh, personally, I would say there is no need to go into the details of whatever is the past because we are going into the habit of going into the past. The moment is the moment. So that's what we try to do. If we want to be peaceful, be in the moment. It's always a fresh, fresh note. It's always a fresh thought that I put. Because once I have waste thoughts, what happens? I cannot create something new. I will always be recycling and recycling what is in the past and others. So thank you so much. And we will end up with meditation. Yeah, so maybe while we have the meditation, may I request that you can open your, you can open the, the video. So more or less, I can be familiar with, with uh, how, is, how you look physically still. We need to relate in terms of this aspect, but I know there is the light that shines within each one. So we can have the meditation. Sit comfortably. And just allow the thoughts, allow the thoughts whatever we have heard today have the firm faith that truly the light shines within each one of us have layers and layers and layers of the false identities. But imagine how powerful the light that we have within, that in spite of the layers of this ego, still the essence of that love and compassion and the joy is still managed to be expressed. So as I journey inward, just allow external things that out that are out there to be just the way they are no judgment it is just the way they are and as I allow the stillness of my senses to operate then I can use the stillness of the mind to plant the pure seeds of the truth of who I am. I am a pure soul. Feel the sensation of how it is to be pure. Feel so light. Feel so free. Feel unlimited. And in this unlimitedness, I get settled 
into that feeling of peace. Nothing disturbs me. It's a thought that disturbs. I have just chosen a pure thought. I am a peaceful soul. Peace is my original quality. Peace is within me. I get settled into this very pleasant feeling of peace. If you can even put an image that heightens the feeling of peace, do so. It can be the beautiful lake. It can be that vast sky. Spotless sky. It can be the beautiful forest. This nature make us experience peace. Because our nature is also peace. Peace is its nature. Dwell into this experience. Experience within. Affirm. And as you breathe in, you allow the energy of peace to run through every cell of the body. So powerful that it can heal the part that have become sick, absorbing negativity. And then, Allow this powerful energy of peace to extend to the atmosphere, to nature, to other human souls, to your other members of the family. Send them these very pure vibrations of peace. Send this vibration of peace to those who are hopeless, to those who are working so hard to help in this situation, saving lives caused by the COVID. And now, slowly, put your consciousness, allow your consciousness to come back into the physical body. Take a deep breath in, breathing that very sweet peace and silence, and breathe out that silence and peace. So as I go with that action and interaction out there, manage to express this beautiful feeling of peace. And you will definitely smile so sweetly. Yeah, so I see on the screen, Sajiv. Hello. Sarah, you're there? Yeah, hi. Uh, Javon did not open the camera. There is this iPad. Will Hassan is there. 
Sarah, Muna is there, Jemaine, Mohammed. Okay, so I think these are the images that I have here. So it was really so lovely and a lot of pleasure. And thank you for the evening and really have a very peaceful and wonderful great weekend. So I hope to see you on Monday. Thank you. Thank you so much.